Welcome everyone to the 13th episode of the YAE podcast. On this episode, I'm talking with Dean, the CEO and founder of Vesuvio, a provider of bespoke chatbot solutions for companies. And um, I, I really just can't wait to talk with him about chatbots, a bit of marketing. And Dean, I want to say congrats to you. You know, we've been talking for, for quite some time now and what you've achieved just in the period that we've been chatting is phenomenal. So congrats to you. Um, and, and I look forward to discussing your knowledge on, on, on chatbots. So thanks for being on, man. Absolutely. No problem. <clears throat> no problem. So, so for the people listening, obviously you're big on chatbots. People are obviously aware of email. What's the difference between, you know, chatbots and email and, and what is chatbots with the way that you use them? May look chatbots and email, you know, I, I suppose it, it, it comes in, you know, two different sort of things. It depends on your demographic. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of people have this assumption that chatbots are going to be able to do a whole lot of different things in the market and as it is today you know i think one of the biggest issues is the fact that you know because chatbots are so new and still people are still adapting to it i think chatbots are much greater as a marketing tool than trying to you know provide support and things like that so um you know the the one thing that i see with chatbots in the next you know over the next two three years as it slowly is adapted is primarily around more so around, I suppose, just delivery notifications and a lot of those automation processes that you normally do via email. Like if you run an e-commerce store, hey, you know, your, your order's on its way, things like that. But also the marketing side, you know. So the, net, the best thing about chatbots is the fact that once someone is engaged through that channel, what happens is, is that they simply become a subscriber, right? Especially if you do it on Messenger. If you got it anywhere else, then it's kind of like a hope and a wish. But through Messenger... And it makes sense to use it on Messenger, right? Um, you're given the ability to establish a communication channel with someone, right? And we're talking about a communication channel that they use on a daily basis, on an average, you know, average of four hours per day. Um, you know, when you look at things like that and you go, well, you know, most people are using Facebook on, on an average of four hours per day, predominantly messaging platforms. You know, I, I don't know if you think about myself, I look at my emails, but the first thing I go to when I open my phone is I go and look at what, you know, messages that I have on messenger first. It's quick. It's easy. I can respond quickly. I don't have to think about, you know, formalities in my typing, things like that. So, you know, chatbots more of a marketing sort of uh, utility over the next, I was maybe instead of utility, maybe we call it a weapon, right? A marketing weapon over the next two, three years before it starts becoming like customer support where it can replace a support agent to answer questions and things like that. But I think marketing is probably the biggest focus that anyone should have uh, when it does come to chatbots as, as well as when it does come to, to messenger as well. So yeah, man, that's, that's a hundred percent email versus messenger. I mean, our global rates we're looking at like, a, you know, between 90 to 93, thereabouts. It keeps changing for obvious reasons, 90 to 93% open rates and, you know, uh, 80 to 90% click through rate, depending on, I suppose, how you've structured it and what your, your goal is when, when constructing something like this as well. So yeah, look, you know, email again, formalities, not as efficient, not easy to access. You know, you're trying to do all this HTML uh, sometimes ends up in spam. You know what I mean? There's so many factors into email. It's just been, I suppose, so overused and abused over the last, you know, 19, probably more, it's about 24 years that it's been around, maybe a little bit longer. Um, you know, it's just been used and abused that everyone's just added filters uh, to it. And, and you'd probably know yourself as well. You know what I mean? So Reese, you know, you had a similar experience recently as well. And, um, you know, it is, it's just, it's just too messy. You know what I mean? It's too much going on and it's just too easy to, to, I mean, there's, you can go to any email provider globally. There's thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of them. And there's so many factors into how you can send an email and, 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 it's, and things like that, as well as, you know, for example, MailChimp and all and SendGrid and all the other platforms that are out there. There's just so many, but there's only one messenger. Yeah, you know exactly. What I mean? exactly. And look, I was having an interesting conversation with an email marketing guy yesterday. And he was saying, he kind of touched on what you were saying is that the original intention for email and, and the whole email platform was to have conversations and build relationships. And now it's almost turned into a, you know, it, it kind of is a platform now where it's just for promoting. You know, there's very few companies that actually use it to build relationships with customers. And, and nowadays my email is just filled with, hey, we're running a webinar, you know, or come buy this product, or this is our weekly sale. And, and, 
And really at the core, that's not what it was really built for. Do you find that Messenger is a tool to build relationships or is it more to just sell to people? Well, it's a bit of both. But the thing is, is a lot of, a lot of people make the mistake right now where they have a short term strategy, right? And, and patience is so, so important because you know, like you can go and push for a sale today and try and make the money today, but you just kind of like, you know, put it, put it as pretty much like fucking on first dates. Right. Um, you know what I mean? I don't know about you, but like when I get like even messages on LinkedIn that are automated as well. Right. And people are like, Oh yeah. Hey, you know, sorry to slide into your inbox on LinkedIn. We're selling this, that, the other, even the people that try and do a simple intro and then automate the follow up to be a sales pitch. I, my reply, I'm not even kidding. Like we're talking, <coughs> excuse me, we're talking to, to people who are actually on LinkedIn in a professional network. And I say to them word for word, sorry, I don't fuck on first dates. The idea is, is that, you know, whatever you do marketing wise, when it's conversational, when it's in someone's inbox, whether it be email, whether it be messenger, uh, you know, it's, it's about building relationships. It's about a long-term strategy. And, uh, and that's, that's probably the, the best way to approach it. You know, you're not going to go and create something like this to just go and sell straight off the bat, you know, and even with Facebook's regulations. Now you can't just send people on a broadcast, for example, or in a sequence um, promotional material outside of a 24 hour window or plus a one follow up. But yeah, um, the, the fact is, is that when you educate your customers, when you engage with your customers, when you're not there, to, to say, hey, buy me, buy me, buy me, you're, you're putting yourself in a position where your, your customers feel valued, you know, subconsciously, where they go, you know, these guys aren't always trying to sell to me, but they're always keeping me up to date with news and information and et cetera and so on. If someone subscribed and, you know, said, hey, look, I actually want this information, then yeah, but even then they still get tired of it and they go, oh, yeah, it's just another promotional email again. So look, it's really important that the strategy is more conversational than trying to sell, um, you know, and look, and it depends on the use case, you know, with chatbots and messenger, if you're running some Facebook ads, for example, you know, the first thing you're doing, realistically speaking is selling, but that's because you've already done the, the legwork in the actual advertising itself. I think it's what comes afterwards is, is where it's that more, you know, relationship building or you know, just providing them things that, that make their life productive, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely agree with you. And, and it's very interesting that you mentioned that because I was watching a Frank Kern video this morning where he was talking about, you know, 97% of people that you're running ads to, in fact, probably a lot more aren't going to buy today. Yet everyone's going for that 3% that are, that are going to impulse buy, um, you know, and, and without realizing that when everyone's going for that market, A, it's expensive, you know, that small 3%, it's very expensive to do that. And B, you know, you're going for the short term quick sale. Whereas if you focus on the other 97% that you can build a relationship with, develop long term, you know, relationships, you not only get a sale eventually, but you're going to get that lifetime value that just increases the longer that person stays with you. You know, do, do you think yeah. similar to that? Look, um, you know, I had, I actually had someone on LinkedIn about a week ago when I, when I literally said to them, I don't fucking first dates. Yeah. Um, you know, I said, look, sorry, mate, I don't fucking first dates. And, uh, you know, he laughed and he was like, Oh yeah, that's cool. You know, he sort of liked my approach to it. Um, and he actually asked my feedback. He goes, so how could I make this better? And yeah. I said, well, you know, for starters, why don't you start building a relationship or provide value? It's like, it's like, you're coming to me. I don't know who the fuck you are. And if you're watching this, um, I'm hoping that um, that Reese is going to bleep out swearing <laughs> if he feels like it. Like, you know, it's like, I don't know who the fuck you are. I don't know what the fuck you want. And I don't know what the fuck your product does because you, you clearly can't do any kind of elevated pitch if your life depended on it. Um, you know, and you're in that situation where you're just like, you're not, you're not giving me value. You might say you can go and increase my business revenue by 150%. But I couldn't give a rat's ass because that's what every motherfucker in the world is telling me to, that, that they can do. Yeah. Right. You know, like, oh yeah, we've got the results behind us, da 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 da. But you only hear about the wins. What about your losses? What about that's the true. times you failed? And so it's like, you know, like if I think about a sales pitch for me, like I tell people straight up, I go, you know, it doesn't work in this industry. It doesn't work in this industry. It doesn't work in this industry. And it doesn't work when you do this. And it doesn't work when you do that because you know, being upfront about not only the good side and the bad side, 
uh, you sorry, not only the good side, but the bad side as well. You know, you, you sort of build that relationship of trust where it's like, well, Hey, you know, like we're making it obvious, like things do go wrong. It's not like the world's perfect. And it's not like we can smash it every time. And there's so many variables in the world as well that contribute to that too. So, you know, it's situations like that where you really need to look at, you know, that relationship, that long-term value. It's like, you know, you're the one coming to me, not me coming to you. If I was coming to you, give me the sales pitch. But if you're coming to me, build a relationship. I don't want to hear the sales pitch. You know what I mean? Because you're not giving me any value. You know, you're not valuable as being part of my network or even considering having you as someone who's going to do work for me as a client or things like that. It's really important that we, we get value down packed. Um, and, and you're offering that from the start. I think I just did a recent video as well. Reese, you might've watched it talking about value from the start, you know, like a free audit value doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to give you a thousand dollars of my time. You know, you, you kind of set yourself up in a way to, you know, give someone five minutes where if it was custom and tailored, it probably would have taken maybe two hours of your time. Mm. Your time could be worth a thousand dollars an hour, but if we could shorter that down to five minutes of your time, I, I'd say that, you know, that five minutes of value that's actually, you know, coming towards me, if you are going for the sales pitch approach, you know, at least bring some value to the table to start with. But the, the ones that I've always seen that work out, I've got uh, a, a contact of mine on LinkedIn and, uh, and we've grown phenomenally, phenomenally. And it was all because before we even talked about what we're doing and how we can benefit each other, we're kind of just having a conversation like we were best friends. You know what I mean? And we're just having that conversation. I think it took three months and about maybe 20 messages. And now she's brought me well over maybe ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 worth of business uh, and vice versa. I've made quite a few referrals and helped her out too. She had some situations with a non-for-profit. I was able to assist, uh, you know, it had nothing to do with my own business, but my, myself personally was able to solve one of their problems. And I, and I, and I did that. And, you know, you can see how that relationship has gone both ways, purely based on relationship and value. And I've only ever met this person once. And, you know, the rest has been online and that online connection. So, yeah, it's, it's really important. So, so would you agree with the statement that relationship building is the new lead generation? Sorry, say again. Would you agree that relationship building is the new form of lead generation in opposed to like just upfront Absolutely. selling? Yeah. Absolutely. Look, it depends. You know, you're a real estate agent and you're trying to get some leads. You're a plumber, you're a tradie or whatever it is. You know, like you, sure the relationship's long term, but you know, those people solely depend on, I suppose, leads, contact details, that first point of contact. If you're running Facebook ads, for example, taking them through a chat bot, you know, you're asking them pre-qualifying questions, making sure that they're the right customer for you. And then on top of that, you're also going and you're, you're adding in, uh, you know, phone number, email address so we can contact you. You know, and that's, that's maybe not so much selling up front. You're not giving a price. You're not giving an offer. You're just trying to get their contact details. Um, so we need to make sure that, that you know, getting a lead and, doing, and, and probably going for a sales approach are two very different things that come under the same spectrum where they very much so need to be differentiated because you still need to establish that relationship first. So, but yes, I completely agree with you is that, you know, and we can see already uh, how many people are using messenger. Like there's people that are using Facebook to, to get business organically in groups and, and things like that. You know, we can really see how a lot of these people have, have come together through this digital platform uh, and they haven't gone for the kill straight away, you know, They've, they've, they've gone there, they've nurtured it, they've massaged it, they're, they're really, you know, understanding the relationship, they're taking the time to pay attention, like everyone in my, my contact list on my phone, you know, like I've got over maybe 6,000 contacts, right, and then when I get a call from someone, and it says Jimmy, and I go, who the fuck's Jimmy, right, <laughs> mm. I probably, I sit there, and I, I see the call, and I'll open up notes, so I've got notes on my phone, Jimmy likes NRL. He goes for the West Tigers. Yeah, that's he, awesome. Uh, he has three kids. He went on holidays two years ago to, to Bali. You know what I mean? Like all the things that he's ever said to me, I write down and I make sure I keep notes of him yeah. because Jimmy contacted me two years ago. I don't know, hypothetically speaking, for a website. And Jimmy wants to update his website now because he's found out there's new technology and new ways of doing things. So when Jimmy calls me and I answer the phone, I could go, Jimmy, mate, long time no speak. Last time I spoke to you, you were in Bali or you're heading to Bali. Oh, wow, mate. I can't believe you remembered that. And, you know, it's 
like uh, I think the fact is, is that, you know, and this sounds pretty fake. It sounds like a fake relationship, right? Because I've written it down in that sense. But at the end of the day, business is business. Mm. And if, if you can make your customers feel like they're, they're valued and, and you remember them and you remember everything about them and you've got an IQ of, of, of 128 purely based on the fact of your memory, you know what I mean? You're going to feel valued. But the best part too is just about being genuine about it. When you read those notes, you're going to go, oh yeah, I remember Jimmy. Jimmy's a great customer. He's got this, 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 and this. You know what I mean? And you start, it's the, 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 I suppose the memory starts flowing back. And that's what's important. Like we all understand that at some point in time, people forget things, uh, you know, and that's why I say it's important. Like every phone call I make, I make sure I'm taking notes. If that person has, you know, a small talk type of conversation with me, I always ensure that, I make notes about it, even on messenger. Like when we have leads come through and uh, you know, after they go through a process and they leave their information and everything else, you know, I take notes about them. When I get on the call for a call with them, I even add the notes on messenger. So if I ever go and jump on messenger again, you know, chatbots aside, I can look at it. I could see notes about that customer and what their, the history is about it. And that's what makes things productive. What's what makes things, you know, more successful. That's what makes customers feel valued is that I know everything about you, but you're dealing with three, five, 10,000 customers over 10 years, hypothetically speaking. So that's, that's where that value really comes into play is, you know, I suppose people have a sense of belonging when they feel like they're loved and they're valued. Yeah. And so it's important that that that's part of that process. Yeah. And look, that's a recurring topic now that, that I've started to, a trend that I've started to notice in a lot of the podcasts I've been doing is that one thing that people, you know, need to get more of a hold of is that because we live in a time where, you know, everyone's time is so precious, when you physically, you know, show people that I'm going to go out of my way to do a, a five minute breakdown of your website to, to in six months time get you as a lead, or I know about what your family's up to and I take the time to actually care about you, people respect that and genuinely, you know, appreciate that you've taken time out of your precious day, you know, speaking of, because, because yeah, people, people like time is so important now and, and use think, it to your advantage. Yeah. I think one of the questions that I often get asked when I'm talking about things like this, they were talking like, you know, at the end of the day, every customer is in a never ending marketing funnel thing. People think that marketing funnels, uh, just like, you know, an, an email sequence or, uh, you know, landing page and, you know, educating right through to delivery and getting a sale and things like that. The fact is that a marketing funnel is never ending, yeah. right? It's from the point where you talk to the customer to the point that you get them on board to the point that after you get them on board a year later, they need something else. They're always in a continuous marketing funnel. One of the questions that I always get asked is, is how do you, you know, make back the time. How do you like, you know, it's costing me money. If I've got a hundred customers and I spend five minutes with them, that's 500 minutes a week, hypothetically speaking, that I'm spending on each of these customers. Totally get it. Totally, totally, totally get it. Sometimes it's longer, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You know, Reese, we've been on the phone sometimes for, uh, you know, 40 hours. minutes at a time, yeah. hour. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we, we got, oh yeah, just a quick 15 minute meeting. And then we end yeah. up just, blowing it out of proportion, right? How do you make back that time? And the fact is, is that, you know, that customer, there's two factors to this one as a business owner, you know, you'd want to factor in your time to your cost, yeah. right? So whatever it is that you're doing, sure. Like, you know, a lot of people go, oh yeah, I can do this out of the sake of doing it. Reality is, is that you should be including that in your cost, but you know, you, you have, your customers are happy to pay you purely based on the fact that, you know, you, you're given the ability to, uh, you know, feel valued or you give them the, the ability to feel valued. They don't care what the cost is. They're just happy to pay you because they, they get value from you. Value comes in forms of the work that you do as well as the, the I suppose, the time that you give, right? Because everyone's got an exchange of value. So people are happy to pay you, right? How do you make back the money? You include it in your costs. And two, I'll give you an example. I referred one person to one of my colleagues. Yeah. He does websites, right? I referred one person. I spent an hour meeting, meeting with them both, making sure they got to know each other well, right? Now, colleague of mine's come back to me and said, Dino, fucking phenomenal. I can't yeah. believe my eyes. This is just unreal. 
that customer that you introduced me to and you spent the time nurturing and introducing and making sure that things go well and the communication was on point and that he felt like he was getting the right amount of value from my services yeah. has now just referred me to four different people and the value of each of them are five grand each. You've just made me 20 grand from yeah. one guy and it was a referral. So he's, he has spent three hours nurturing this customer, three hours, you know, knowing about them, taking notes about their, what they do day to day, their family, their, the holidays that they go on and having that relationship. And that person has now referred him $20,000 of business. And what was, what did I have to do with that? I mean, I spent an hour of my time nurturing that too. What do I get out of it? He's paid me three grand. I didn't even ask for it. He's got my bank details and he's just gone like one day I've seen three grand pop up into my account. Oh, where the hell did this come from? Who from, how from? I look at the details and it's come from him and I called him and I go, man, like, what the hell? Like, dude, it's cool. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need to give me money, you know, just yeah. you refer me enough business already. And he goes, dude, you just made me 20 grand in a week. He goes, like, I'm happy to give you three grand. No problem. I didn't ask for it. You know what I mean? But he's happy. Like, he already sees the value in referring. Like, I see the value in him referring me business. And he sees the value in me referring him business you know, so going both ways, but then now he's, he's had this sense of feeling where, you know, the value that I've provided to him through one contact that I've introduced him to superseded the value that I, that, that he brings to me and has therefore said, Dean, look, I'm giving you three grand out of this because this is, this is just unreal. Like he's, he's, you know, blown away. He's never, never done 20 grand in a week from one referral, like one customer referral altogether. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. It's with anything when value exceeds price, you know, people buy. And, and from what you're saying, it's almost like doing the long-term strategy, which I, which I gather that's what you're playing. When you do that long-term strategy, it's a very important to plant seeds now, you know, plant seeds everywhere, you know, almost be omnipresent, be everywhere at once, but not directly by mass marketing, by building those relationships with people that then spread the word, because that's probably one of the most powerful ways because when, when someone says, you know, you really should talk to Dean about, you know, your chatbot solutions, that is more powerful than a Facebook ad hitting that second person saying, you know, we can help you because they have more trust with the person that's just told them about you as well. Um, that's right. You know, and, and I want to touch, touch into chatbots with what you do as well. How is what you do with, with your chatbot solutions different to me just logging onto ManyChat? Well, look, uh, you know, being completely open and transparent with you, man, we use many chat. Yeah. The, the okay. fact is, is that, I mean, we have our own proprietary systems, um, you know, but they're, they're very expensive to run and your everyday customer can't afford a thousand dollars a month to, to run a simple ad campaign on top of whatever a marketing agency is charging to do the ads, yeah. you know, like talking about marketing agencies between a thousand, two thousand dollars a month on a basic level. Um, you know, and, and then on top of that, another thousand for our service. It's a bit, you know, unrealistic in that sense. Um, and, and for a simple service as well. So being open and transparent, like we, we make the call, like if it's a business owner that needs something that's a little bit more complex, a little bit more artificially intelligent, has its own learnings, things like that. hundred percent, you know, we'll go and we'll say, well, many chats probably not the right thing, but then what we do charge for is we charge for our, our knowledge going into building that out, the user testing, the hundreds of hours of user testing we've done to validate, you know, what, uh, what people or what the majority of people want to see in a conversation and what they're comfortable with. Right. So, you know, and it makes it affordable, right? So if I can reduce my cost by, you know, however many percent and go from a thousand dollars a month to, $10 a month plus whatever, you know, the, our costs are to build out their funnels and on, on that, uh, on that conversation through many chat, uh, you know, we don't just stop at many chat, you know, there's still a lot of external integrations that come into play where we're collecting a lot of data that many chat doesn't show you. We've taken that extra step, um, in that process. But what we've done is we, we've, we've taken a wheel instead of reinventing the wheel, right? We've taken a wheel and we've put a box on it and made it useful, right? Yeah. So, you know, and that's, and that's what, you know, at the end of the day, it's, we're solving a big problem because, you know, most of our customers are resellers, they're marketing agencies, right? <clears throat> so what happens is with the marketing agencies, they go out there, they try and use many chat, 
And then they go and build these funnels. They don't know what works. They don't know what type of buttons to use and when to use them. And, and you know, what ends up happening is they go to their customer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can get you all these amazing results. And then they screw it over because they just don't know how to build it properly or they don't know how to build, you know, build out that system in a way that it's going to be, uh, you know, that, that user experience, that customer experience is going to be great. Not only for the end user being your leads or potential leads or potential buyers, but also talking more about your customer as well. All of our systems, we've got our own leads dashboard, for example. So if a customer, you know, one of our customers or one of our resellers customers being the client doesn't have a CRM and they're pretty old school, they can log in and export it as a CSV spreadsheet and they can upload it to an existing CRM if they want to, or we can integrate it directly to their CRM. We give them email notifications every single time they receive a new lead. We send them SMS notifications every time they get a new lead or a new sale or whatever it might be. So there's all these different things that we're doing to improve that customer journey, that, that customer experience, as well as the end user's experience, having to you know, work with that customer as well. So, you know, it, it does, like I said, you know, what take talking about funnels again, right? Is it's more customer journey is, is that funnel. So that journey, you take that customer on, you need to remove that friction out of the equation. If there's too much friction, then, you know, from the very first point of working from you, someone's going to look at you and say, you know, if, if it's too hard just to get an answer from you or, you know, get a simple email back from you, then, you know, I feel like subconsciously it's going to be hard to work with you long-term anyway. Mm. Right. So you're already subconsciously implanting uh, these thoughts into these, these people's heads. You might not even realize it, but for example, like if, if someone has to go and, you know, do all these crazy shit, like, you know, and go answer 10 emails for you to go and build out this system for them. Right. Uh, you know, again, it's going to be that friction. It's going to be like, well, do I really want to work with you? Because, you know, I'm already seeing the friction. I'm already seeing the problems. Yeah. You know, and I like what you said earlier about planting the seeds. At the end of the day, you reap what you sow. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's either, you know, I, I think you think a good analogy would be with lemon trees. When you plant a lemon tree, it takes two, three, four years before you see your first lemon. But when you do, and there's four, five, six years, you find yourself saving, a, you know, $300 a year because you bought a $25 lemon plant, you know, four years ago. Yeah, exactly, man. You know what I mean? And so that's where you got to see the value. Okay, $25 of my time to get a $1,000 return if it's six months a year. But then you got to remember that lemon tree also has sprouts. And those little sprouts, they pollinate. And when they pollinate against each other and they drop seeds, more yeah. lemon trees pop up. 100%. And look, look, when, when, when you position yourself like that, you know, it, it, it kind of varies industry to industry. Obviously, you know, it, if you're a dentist, you know, people, people aren't waiting. If someone has a sore tooth, they're not waiting for a Facebook ad to hit them, you know, while they're waiting for this, you know, scrolling through Facebook, fuck a Facebook ad. Can you hit me so I can go to find out where your, vent, your place is? It's more like a, a Google search thing. But if you've already built that relationship with someone, you know, especially for a service-based business, you build that relationship. They might not need your service now. They may never need it or they may need it in the next three months, but you're the first person that comes to mind because you've been developing that relationship with them. So, so right. for, let's just say for a service-based business, um, whether it's, you know, real estate agent, whether it's a, um, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be, what's the best way for a service-based business to use chatbots? Service-based business to use chatbots, the absolute best way you can do it yeah. is by building a simple funnel in ManyChat. Costs you 10 bucks a month on a very, very small scale. Um, you know, if you're having trouble with that, happy to, happy to consult and help out in, in any way that I can. Yeah. Um, you know, to a certain degree, I'm happy to just help out, you know, and depending on, start asking technical questions and things like that. That's when you're kind of like, hey, hey, hey mate. But um, at the end of the day, with service-based businesses, uh, you know, if you if you solely rely on leads, for example, look, Messenger is getting a little bit complicated now with how you can actually, you know, communicate with your customers. Um, in, in that same respect, if you want to take that relationship from the very start being Messenger with chatbots and then take it to, you know, to, to a mobile phone or email or in person, um, the best way to do that is building a simple funnel uh, with your Facebook ad, for example, 
uh, even if someone just found you organically, where you get to a home screen, gives you some simple options, and make an inquiry, uh, you know, frequently asked questions, our services, see what's there, give them something simple, inquire now, goes to make an inquiry, the, the actual make an inquiry section, not a separate one, the same one, and then go and fill out some pre-qualifying questions. So what issue you having, yada, yada, get the knowledge, and then go and ask them for a phone number and email address and off you go. So uh, you know. if, if you're building sequences and flows like that, how do you personalize it? How do you personalize it? I mean, you know, you, it comes down to the copywriting really. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, you can either say, hi, Reese, what's your phone number? Or you can say, that's fantastic, Reese. We're really excited to be helping you out with your teeth today. We need your phone number to get in contact with you to book a consultation. Would you mind sharing with us below? Yeah. You know what I mean? How do you make it personal? Like, and personal isn't just emojis too. You know, like you can use emojis, but I mean, are they necessary? Are they part of your target audience? Is that what's really going to work with them? You know, at the end of the day, it's just like, you, you could be like really vague and, and fucking dumb, simple with your, with your copy or, or you can, you know, really, I mean, like, I, there's a there's a thing called emotional marketing value and i could say to you you know reese i can tell you the uh secrets to successful marketing right right when i say reese i can tell you the secrets to successful marketing how do you feel about that like actually tell me how do you feel i mean if you can deliver what it says you know then okay then sure yeah i'm gonna rephrase reese I'm going to tell you the untold secrets to truly successful marketing. And I could tell you, I could tell that to you right now. How do you feel? A lot better than the first one. Absolutely. Untold secrets. There's plenty yeah. of secrets in the world. And you know what? Truth is a lot of secrets get told. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's, everyone's got a marketing secret. I've got untold marketing secrets. Am I going to, am I going to share them with you? No. But if I, if I put something together where it was untold secrets, I'm sharing the ones that I haven't told anyone before that have clearly worked. So, yeah. and then you're truly successful, right? You're successful marketing Define successful, you know, what, how, how, how long is a piece of string, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, you got one lead for a customer. You spent 10 bucks. Yeah, cool. You got a you know, thousand dollar return. That's, that's cool beans, man, but you didn't do anything else. You know, so it's like truly successful marketing. So you're looking at those, those really valuable words and they, they come on an empathetic scale, a spiritual scale and an intellectual scale as well. And you look at those three and you really got to crunch down on the adjectives, you know, and the pronouns are just really pushing that, you know, that, that experience. And that's how people feel connected. Right. Because it's like, it's like, you know, this is a classic example. If we were to, you know, I suppose really, really drown down or, or, you know, water down what I just said into a really basic form. It's like when you say something to someone, right? Or you give them directions or whatever, and they reply back to you and they say, K. Oh, and then you get so fucking mad, right? <laughs> you're like, you're not putting the effort in, man. You know, if yeah. you, get that, you get that, like, what the fuck? You know, what? That, out of all the time I'm giving you, all you could say was K, that's it. But yeah. if I said, okay, mate, no problem. You're like, yes, yeah, sweet. Give me a, you know, or a thumbs up. You know what I mean? Like, give me a thumbs up. And I'm just like, okay. you know what I mean? So it's the same, same deal. Like yeah. we're talking about now, like what I just spoke about may have been complex, but how we can apply this, this analogy with the K and the thumbs up, right? Unless it's a big thumbs up they've, that they've pressed and held. I'm okay with that. Cause I actually have to spend time holding it. Right. Uh, but the, with the K and the thumbs up, if we on a very basic example that we all know that it's, it's a stereotype that for all of us that we fucking hate. Right. And we can relate that to, I suppose, getting more uh, intriguing with our, our, our marketing copy and the way that we interact with people, even when we're not there killer, you know, it's going to make all the difference in being able to, you know, build that successful funnel. And you know what? It's clarity as well. Like if, if it's too much for me to understand, you know what I mean? Like, you've got all these complex moving cogs, you know what I mean? It's just too hard to understand, you know, what your service is, what you do. And then people just get lost. 